Pardon me. So that's campfire stuff. The great Fort Folavon rendezvous. It's like stepping back in time to northern Wisconsin's fur trade era. At Fort Folavon Historical Park. Trim that's right. Now, this is you always see, that's that gum. Bear grease, wood ash, and pine sap. Uh -huh. Three ingredients mixed together. Everybody had a little pot. You just warm it by the fire and smear it on anything you want to seal. So they seal all the seams with the gum and then smear it all over completely with lard. Cover it completely with rendered animal fat from all those animals they killed. Bear fat makes the best lard. So once it's prepared like that, what do we got? 18th century Tupperware. <laughs> this is a sealed container. This is airtight and watertight. Now, if we store it properly, it'll keep indefinitely. Well, these little cellars they made called food caches, they were simple but very effective. Let's make one right here. Sugar bush is over, the fire's out, we're leaving. Let's put a little food cache right here. It'll be easy to find it. system. You lived in the village and you worked for the Lord. He owned everything and he paid you. Part of what he paid you was, if you were lucky, some flour. And if you didn't bake, they fined you. So you had, you had to be right on the ball there with that. No faking around. Mm. And of course they charged them, you know, for uh, using the oven, which they paid ready? with flour because um, they had no money, so the Lord got it out. And so the fur trade built us. Oh yeah, the one other thing, you know what, this is my own conclusion, okay? Uh, during the revolution, you know, it was a big deal that the British did not like slavery. You knew that, right? Okay, well, I firmly believe that one of the reasons was, it's a heck of a lot cheaper to get these poor schmucks to come out here, pay them 10 pounds, and then they pay it back to you, than it was to buy a slave for a thousand pounds, send him out here, and if he dies, you're out a thousand pounds, and these other kids, if they die out here, who cares? Not very pretty, but that was the way it was. And you won't find that all in one book, either. Oh. It's amazing how much you can do with that. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been doing fur trade for about four or five years now, and I've never been very good at throwing tomahawk. I actually broke a tomahawk the first time I ever threw one. So Carl here was trying to teach me how to throw one properly so I wouldn't break it. <laughs> and I've been doing uh, living histories, uh, different time periods, for about ten years now. Um, 16 thirds for a few, for, for about ten, and then a fur trade for about seven or eight. And I started doing hawk throwing uh, since I was about 15 or so. And um, over the years, I've learned to kind of get people to get thrown a sticking, and took a few tries to be able to get her to stick a few today. Yeah. But she's doing fine. She's doing fantastic today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Well, my name 
Cayman's Hank, and I like to set it rendezvous and sing the original Voyager songs that they paddled along to keep themselves getting from getting bored. Too bored anyway. goes into yes, the beer. Certainly. Now this is the red birch beer. It's a sarsaparilla base, then made with the sap of the How eastern red birch tree. It really just doesn't get too much more peaceful than this.